Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome back to Dave's Garage 249. Today we're going to look at some wheelie bars. Uh, somebody made a comment and asked about those uh, leaning up against the wall. And I was at a swap meet and I picked up a set of uh, slightly used wheelie bars and I'm gonna adapt them to my 68 Chevelle Pro Street. So, let's get started. So here's the bars. I uh, picked them up at a swap meet. I didn't pay very much money for them. Uh, they were kind of painted up and uh, you can see that at one time these were really nice chrome expensive 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 bars. Uh, let's take a look and see what I bought and I'll show you a few things uh, here. Uh, okay to start with uh, there's been uh, repairs made and geez why would there be repairs well there probably was something happened <laughs> and uh, this was all painted silver so I stripped all the silver paint off so we could see what, what the repairs were what the welding looked like and uh, it's something that I can use um, just the material on this thing is worth the, the money I paid uh, so I'm not worried about that but here's what I think happened uh, here's another uh, repair I think there was a pit accident and uh, could be here's the hazard with having wheelie bars especially like on your pro street car shows people trip over the dang things <sighs> dang it they uh, so we I usually set char uh, chairs behind the car someplace to go to deter people from walking directly behind the uh, car it was a big problem with my uh, pro street VW that I had a uh, nice set of tubular wheelie bars but people were constantly uh, almost tripping or I'd have to hey, hey watch for the wheelie bars and uh, also in the staging lanes uh, people would pull up real close behind you and uh, not look down and see the wheelie bars there so uh, so there's the kind of the downside of running wheelie bars on the street I mean you really don't need them but they just it's a cool factor and, um, and if you were at the track and you had slicks I guess I'd rather have wheelie bars on the car than not have them so there's the bars the rod ends are okay, I cleaned them up. They're usable. Uh, they're, they're a little overkill to have rod ends. I think that there might be easier ways. I'm gonna have to buy some casters, but there's a whole bunch of different routes I can go with casters. And I'm gonna have to do something about uh, cleaning up and uh, possibly use some chrome paint. Uh, Ravel makes a pretty good chrome paint. There's uh, there's another thing, bare metal foil, uh, all kinds of ways to uh, doctor this up and make them look good. Now bear in mind that most of this front part would be under the car anyways at a car show. So anyways, let's, uh, the next thing to do is to take them and uh, shove them up under the car and see if they fit. Uh, I've already done some preliminary measuring so it looks like they'll fit. So let's put them under the car, slide them up there and see just exactly how we can do this. Okay, so here they are, kind of sticking out from the back of the car. See if we can't get uh, a little... So, I think it's going to look awesome. I've got them on a furniture dolly and uh, slid up underneath there. And I'll get down in there and we'll uh, see if we can't get a view on them that shows you how they're going to fit. And I'll show you some of the options. Okay, the old saying is there's many, many ways to uh, skin the cat, and uh, there's all kinds of ways to mount these. Uh, the bottom bars could be mounted right off of the uh, ladder bar mounts. There's that possibility. But then what do you do with the two top bars, which uh, will swing up, and uh, they're, they're gonna have to be uh, narrow. So this is kind of like starting to show, it's starting to show me what is really going to have to be done um, by just sticking it up there. Now th these are kind of engineering exercises that uh, us amateur home builders encounter that, uh, so you start with, 
uh, you got a space, a finite space to fit them in, and we'll define that space with some measurements, and I'll do that uh, uh, later on. But really, the measurements are going to be the widest point of the shocks at the bottom and the, and the narrowest point of the shocks at the top. So that's the working range that these bars can move in. Um, so what I'm thinking is, is that um, I'm also going to eventually put a parachute on this car and I'm going to have to raise the fuel tank uh, for two reasons. One is it's uh, actually a little bit lower than the pump and number two is uh, you've got to be able to move these wheelie bars up and down with the suspension and not uh, crunch on the fuel tank. So, uh, but it's kind of a, it's kind of a nice deal to have a fuel tank flush with the trunk floor, but it it uh, it stopped us from doing things like having the exhaust come all the way out the back and wheelie bars, and uh, also want to do a parachute mount. And so when we build this thing, we're going to incorporate the uh, where the actual parachute goes to, and I think you want it kind of in line with the rear end housing because if you if you attach it to the the uh, sprung weight of the car, and when that parachute deploys, it's going to upset the suspension something terrible. I I'm, I would imagine, uh, uh, so it might cause you to have uh, you know one of those woohoo moments when you're driving the car. So that's what I'm thinking is is that we need to know the what the maximum distances we have between the springs at the bottom and at the top, and I want to build a bracket that is going to. Uh, utilize the rear end housing bolts uh, and, and bolt to that and also I want to be able to remove it easily so I'm um, thinking something that looks like a uh, hitch receiver on both sides that you slide in and have some pins uh, it, it, so it'll be like two pieces um, and make it out of some good material like uh, 1018 or 4340 molly if I can find it. Uh, I can go to Alro Steel and get what I need. So uh, that's a fill in the blank thing and uh, I'll show you what I got in mind. Here's a, a rough sketch I made of kind of the concept of what I want to do and uh, so here you can see upper bars, lower bars and uh, this would be kind of like your hitch on a Reese hitch with a hole through it and then uh, this would be a, a bracket that bolts to the rear end housing so we remove the upper bolts get some maybe you know quarter inch longer ones and uh, weld these receivers on and then uh, you just simply uh, slide the, the wheelie bar in and then use some spring pins and attach it there that way if you want to put the car on the trailer or if you don't want to run the wheelie bars it only take you a minute to remove those spring pins and yank the thing out of there, throw it in a pickup box, put it back on when you get to a car show or to the track or whatever you're going to do. So I think this is a fairly reasonable thing to build in the garage or build on my own. And uh, I have some ideas on how I want to do the hardware. And uh, this isn't Walt Disney Studios yet, but uh, I just thought that it would be easier for you to follow if I could show you the concepts of the things that I want to build uh, it, with illustrations. So the next thing is going to be uh, replace the rod ends with these clevis rod ends. Uh, you don't really need the spherical rod ends because the thing isn't going to really move around uh, much and I can get these in fine threads and I want 3 8 bolt holes. I don't want uh, uh, the problem that, that I can see with those rod ends is that if it's a half inch, uh, half inch 20 thread, you got a half inch diameter hole through the eye. And, uh, and these I can also get blanks if I want to just make, make my own custom uh, sizes. So that's, uh, that's what I got in mind for uh, replacing the rod ends. And these are not very expensive and I can get these from McMaster Car. Now to uh, attach to the end of the wheelie bar where the casters are, being that you have a distance there of an inch and a half, I'm thinking I'm going to buy some of these and uh, then I don't have to build spacers or build minimal spacers because otherwise uh, they'll slide back and forth. I'll, I'll take you over and show you what I'm talking about, but why, why you'd need these on the caster end. 
And the reason for that is right here. So you've got to have something to fill in this gap because uh, these are going to walk back and forth and you don't want that. Especially if you're going to drive it on the street, you want the thing to be fairly rigid uh, so it's not rattling around and banging around and uh, anything that you got nice and finished is going to abrade. So let's go back to this drawing for a second and I'll show you this part right here. Uh, this is going to be a little bit complicated to make and I think that I can buy these from Competition Engineering and uh, that will save me some fabrication time and this might give me a little extra uh, welding surface to attach them to the square tube. So uh, what I'm going to have to do is go to Alro Steel or someplace that, and uh, I need some plate, quarter inch thick plate to make this piece out of and then I'm going to need two different sizes of rectangular tubing so one will slide in the other and they don't need to be very long probably I'd say 12 to 14 inches and then these pieces will weld to that plate and I will buy a 12 bolt rear end housing gasket to use for a pattern for bolt holes and the, the pattern I think that will work and then uh, we'll just start fabricating away um, I'm gonna find out if somebody has a water jet or a laser uh, cutter and I can I can design this uh, into a print and have them load it in and cut the piece on a water jet that would just be a little bit expensive but it would uh, be a nice clean engineered looking piece when it's done and that's kinda I'm willing to pay the extra money to do that part of it so the reason why I like these uh, brackets is because they have an offset in them and I think I'm gonna need that offset because the two top bars have to be closer together than the two bottom bars. And the bottom bars are fixed because you have all the you know, the uh, lattice uh, bracing in there. So that will help me get that in. And uh, uh, all I need to do is now that I can see that the wheelie bars will actually physically fit under the car, is decide how far out the back I want them to stick. And then decide uh, what would be the you know, through the suspension travel, make sure that they wouldn't bind. And I don't know if you saw, but on those rods, you could see evidence of where those wheelie bars had been rubbing on uh, suspension components on the previous owner's car. And I, I think that's why he wanted to get rid of them real bad, just because, um, I mean, he just literally gave them to me. I paid for them, but not a whole lot of money. So I'm, I'm willing to invest the time and effort into redesigning everything. So I think it's going to look uh, badass to have these bars on this car and uh, hopefully I can uh, make them look really good without uh, maybe just the part that's sticking out the back of the car keep the chrome and refinish uh, everything underneath the car. Uh, I'm not sure how that would go. I'm sure it would be ungodly expensive to re-chrome these and uh, you can see chrome plating isn't going to want to stay on them. Uh, they flex and move too much. <laughs> And I can tell you this much too, I'm pretty sure that these wheelie bars saw some wheelies, holy cow. Uh, uh, I don't think that the damage that was on them was from a wheelie. It could be though, but it looks to me like something like a golf cart backed into it or another racer or something and might have hit it uh, right, right in that area there. And uh, that's what caused them to have to uh, rework things. So it looks like they're going to fit, looks like it's going to be adaptable. and. Uh, we'll, when, we, when I get material and start getting uh, drawings made, I will uh, post you up on that on uh, my next video. Uh, also, uh, remember I talked about on the last uh, session about testing uh, things like, you know, I've changed the fuel lines and blah, blah, blah. Uh, change everything around, test, uh, make sure that we're not getting dirt. And there's how this polished scoop looks now on the car. And uh, I did some painting detail and that pays off because uh, the other day I came out here to uh, check float levels and uh, I'm gonna get ready to switch carburetors around and I just wanted to uh, make sure that the rear carb which isn't going to change had the float level right while I had everything exposed fired the pump and it quit so I had to go through a troubleshooting procedure switch is good relay is good got down underneath there 
pump had power, something locked it up, uh, pulled the pump out of the car, disassembled it. Um, the pump is clean, has a filter. Uh, the motor was stuck a little bit, so I pulled the motor apart, uh, cleaned the uh, commutator, uh, blew the dust and dirt out from around the brushes and stuff, put it back together, got it running on the uh, with a power supply, and put it back in the car, and it just doesn't sound healthy at all. So it's a uh, it's really uh, not a continuous duty pump. It's a quick fuel pump, 140 gallon per hour. They're not rated for continuous duty. Uh, at the time when I bought the car, I was spending money hand over fist on it because uh, it just seemed like every time I went out to run it, something else was uh, wore out, done for. <laughs> so uh, I put the quick fuel in because the Holly was uh, another hundred dollars, but. This time I ordered the Holly, which is a street strip version, which is rated for continuous duty and will probably last a lot longer. Plus, you can buy rebuild kits for that, and I have two or three of them in the cabinet I picked up at a swap meet, so that's going to help me. So we'll be changing that pump out this week, and uh, and then we're going to pull this front carb off, finish rebuilding the, the new one, get that put together and get it running again. And in the meantime, I'll be working on these wheelie bars. So. Thanks for watching, and I've picked up some new subscribers. Thank you very much for subscribing. I really appreciate it. Uh, tickle that like button. Uh, YouTube likes to see that. And we're hoping that this Christmas, Santa brings me a MacBook so I can do some editing and start making these videos look a little bit more professional. We're looking for 500 subscribers. So that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And uh, Voltor, keep those uh, comments coming in. It uh, fires my imagination. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video.